going, going live. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. And it's different because it's Friday night, not Thursday night. What's that all about? Now everyone's going to be so confused, not least us. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I've been out of sorts for 24 hours. Yeah, I was a bit twitchy last night, but I did have a two hour Zoom meeting with Polish Council to get through. My goodness. That doesn't sound like fun. Um, it was interesting. <laughs> oh, has everyone got a brew? I've got a humongous cup of tea and a backup lemonade. What have you I've, got? I've just got my usual sort of bucket of builder tea. Um, no, no adult beverage for me tonight. No adult beverage for me. I've been exceptionally good on my sins and my weight uh, plan oh. this week. I've only lost half a pound, but oh. you know. I am, I'm hoping for, for a bit of a whoosh next week. Yeah, when it all good. catches up. So I've been exceptionally good. I've not really been in the mood, and I've not that been that mithered about my food. I've planned right. my meals. I've made soup. I've yeah, quiches and things like that. So if I get the munchies, I can have a bit of quiche and not reach for chocolate. And I've made sure there aren't biscuits and other things like that in the house. And Jake's been really good about keeping that kind of stuff out of my way. Oh, that's good. Um, so it's been a fairly easy week and I've barely eaten my sins at all. I mean, I've had 15 today because I decided to have the tiniest bowl of Aldi Choco pillows. You know, yeah. like their version of Crave. My kids love that stuff, yeah. Well, I had some of that, but I didn't have it with the milk because I didn't want to spend the extra sins. And I weighed it out meticulously and then just sat and ate it as a snack after I'd had my dinner. <laughs> and it lasts longer like that, I think. Well, yeah, and I kind of savoured every little bite and took my time with it. Whereas if it was in milk, yeah, I'd have just scooped it down. You would, yeah, yeah. So what have you been up to today? Um, I've worked in the garden a little bit in between showers. Does your bush look tidier today? No, it's, it, it's one of those jobs that looks worse before it looks better. Yeah, well, I know the feeling. Yeah, so um, we earlier in the week, Callum and I hacked some of the bigger ones down right. into smaller chunks. So now we're working through the smaller chunks, dividing the green leaves off mm. and putting those in the bin and then keeping the sticks because I want to use them and yeah. I'm like mulching them down. So so it's just been a it's just been a dividing week this week. But um yeah it's it's not good in between showers. We had hailstones and all sorts today. And then um I guess about half past three I gave up and decided now I'm just coming in and knitting. I, I'm sick of in and out, in and out, in and out so yeah. yeah there is a point where you just think why am i doing this yeah i know it's just not good so yeah well i did my workout um i did the aldi shop i took jake to college yeah and i tried it's a one-way system and i'm driving out and i'm supposed to get into the right hand lane to go back the way i've been and a little bit further on past the college to aldi okay um, for whatever reason the car and I went left back to, towards Ulverston. Ah. I thought, I'm not going to go around the one-way system again and turn around at Asda's and fight with the traffic, which actually wasn't as bad as it usually is. I thought, right. well, I'll just drive to the new Aldi in Ulverston, which I did. Yeah. And yeah. I got the shop in there, and I was in and out in 20 minutes. And did you one? Um, I've been a couple of times, and, and I, I do like it. The... Um, like the the salad veg and the bean sprouts and all things like that are in chiller cabinets with glass doors. All right. And that's quite good because you've got a very tall display. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that did occur to me, it was actually quite hard for me with reasonable eyesight and good glasses mm. to see if there were any courgettes. It's took me ages to realise there weren't any. And by <laughs> which time I'd been through the mange too and, Anything that looked remotely green, I've been opening doors looking for it, and none of it's labelled um, oh. other than inside the glass. So right. it's not like the frozen section in, in the other supermarkets where it's got clear labels as to what's on the shelf. That's 
just a little bit inconsiderate really isn't it yeah so i'm sort of looking at that and thinking well what 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 do we do um do I, and i thought no i'm not going to faff about because the last time i've been the car jets were over in the fresh section right okay and uh, rather than in a chiller which right. they're usually in a chiller in aldi yeah. and i thought right fine whatever so i went around the other bit of the store walked back up to where the other veg is the salady stuff the peppers the cucumbers thinking well maybe the car jets are here no, no. So pink lady apples were an offer again though. Oh, I like the pink ladies. Not that I can eat them. Michelle's with us. She's having a Prosecco being a Friday night. Michelle, you're a braver lady than I am. There's no way I'm drinking alcohol tonight and going for a run tomorrow. Yeah, I would struggle with that. No. That's I why I would have one on a Thursday because Friday is my day off. So, right. But it's fine no no alcohol on a friday and a saturday night in this house. how long a run have you got tomorrow only a 5k she says only a 5k however michelle has ditched us for someone else and okay. i know she's so rude she's catching up with some different friends i mean for goodness sake and Anne has decided to go away in our motorhome for the first weekend um to go to york so she's ditched us. So it's just Elaine and I, and I have a feeling that Elaine is going to try and make me run fast. She's the lady that, that got me under 30 minutes. All the sprinty stuff. Yeah. So I really, really, really need one food tonight, two sleep tonight, and three no alcohol tonight. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh, for anyone that's confused, I've just picked up a circular needle. Um, I am bizarrely knitting a baby dress, not really my thing, but um, and I've just done the garter border on a 3.75 mil needle. Cool. And the reason that I've done it that way is so that I don't, as I did on the previous four attempts, twist the cast on <laughs> when I join it. So I will neatly yeah. sew that up later and I'm about to join with a circular needle. And I'm just Do you know? my baby dress that i've got up for testing at the moment i have a a little garter band at the bottom and i don't know if you remember a couple of weeks back i'd cast it on and i joined it in the round and then um the next day i had to pull it out because i was talking to you i was drinking my wine and i twisted it now i always always start anything that i knit in the round i do at least three to five rows flat first always because i find that it stops you from twisting i don't know how i managed it because i started it flat as i always do um and then one of my testers has said to me literally yesterday why why have you got that flat you're knitting in the round so why have you done that bit flat at the beginning and not to be too rude i felt like saying because it's my pattern and i want it to be flat at the beginning <laughs> is that rude yeah. of me it's one of those things isn't it i think you you have to go with the thing of they don't they've perhaps never done that right yet but even so it's my pattern well you can just say because um i don't want to twist the cast on and it's much easier for a beginner knitter yeah see so you're going so, in the in round later you're so diplomatic and well, i'm yeah. probably i'm probably sat there wishing her dead <laughs> yeah it just it drives me potty like you ask people can you please tell me if there's any errors in this pattern and they write back to you and say, oh, yeah, it's fine. There's no errors. But I, I think maybe you should move this round here and put that there and, you know, oh, make that photo go over there. It's like, I, I didn't ask you that. Yeah, it's not up to them to comment on the layout. And I think in test instructions, I say, I want you to check the accuracy of the numbers for your size. And if you wish to check the numbers for other sizes, please feel free to do so. Mm -hmm. um spelling counts after increases spelling and grammatical mistakes yeah you no know, gratefully received if you feel um 
that a detailed photograph of a technique is required, please let me know. Yeah. However, the layout and design of the pattern and how it looks is my style and my template. Yeah. So please don't comment on that because it isn't changing. Um, and this test I've just done for Yutta, somebody complained that it didn't print well on her printer. She had a really shitey old printer. Sorry, yeah. Sure. Yeah. but you know what I mean. It was a old crap. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she was complaining that it was probably because it was a landscape file rather than a portrait file. Well, if it wasn't printing properly, it wouldn't print properly either way. And it's nothing to do with the layout of the pattern. It's how to, it's whether she set it to scale. If yeah, she yeah. needs it to be A4 and Yutt has made it the American size, is it fills gap or whatever? Um, I don't know. Um, or, or it may be A4 and she needs it the American size. Well, you just pick the scale setting on your computer yeah, for yeah. the printing and it all works absolutely fine. And the only time you wouldn't use that is if you were printing, say, a sewing pattern where the site and you were cutting out a template. And you needed that to be accurate, yeah. Yeah. But, and I mean, the, she's probably in the same position as me. I mean, I don't know how many patterns she's got, but I've got 66 patterns in my store. I'm not going to suddenly go through them all and change the layout just because one tester thinks that something needs to go somewhere else. Well, I always say thanks for your input, but I'm, I'm happy with the layout of my patterns. Mm -hmm. And we are actually just testing the numbers and wording of this particular pattern not the design and layout which is my choice dramatic. this is probably why you go further in business than me i just throw my toys out of my pram and go no <laughs> oh i have my moments <laughs> uh that's funny so can we talk about all the all the knits that you're wearing is this the finished jumper you were making the other day this is over the top and i don't know whether you can see there's a little bit vertical no, line there down that centre garter band there is a a band at the side can you Hang see on, can we go back can we go back to the middle one the, yeah yeah in the boobage do you know when we quite often talk about a landing strip elsewhere is that yeah. a boobage landing strip i believe it is it's like this way to heaven or something like yeah, that it's gorgeous look at my beautiful girls come see yeah here's my wongers and does it get why is your box included? <laughs> well, the gorgeous. It's just adding to the beautifulness of the boobage. That, that that line down the middle, is it the mm -hmm. same all the way down or does it get wider towards the bottom? It goes or? about two inches down the central stitch. Yeah. And then it's five stitches of garter all the way down to right, the bottom. So Some there. people took the line all the way to the bottom. Right. And what have you done? I just followed the pattern as written because I was testing and the only changes I made were with permission where I asked Yutta if I could do a few extra uh, increases for my hips. Right, okay. Uh, and then you've got the things down the side. Yeah, it's and got the same right. detail around right down the side and the side panel has the increases <laughs> on the whole panel. And is the so back you... the same or is it, flat, is it straight with nothing? Same at the back. Right, okay. I love so it. It's a little notch. Is your back longer or shorter than your front? Same, same length. Same as the front. Um, in reality, there's probably one or two rows difference because I had added bust starts. Ah, uh, yeah. Which added length to the front and has worked really well in terms of fit. I'm very pleased with how well that's done. worked out. Well done. Again, that's just just followed the instructions in the pattern, not because it's a well written pattern. Yeah, take, you know, take no credit for it. It is beautiful, beautiful. And I've still got a couple of ends to weave in, but I thought I just, I want to wear it tonight and show you all. Uh, I wore it for a Zoom meeting for a, a couple of hours last night and then took it off again. And I wore it with my khaki coloured cardigan. Right, okay. So it actually looked like a twin set. Yay, I love it. You've been after a twin set. Haven't I just? Oh, I love it. So what's that cardigan you got on there? Uh, this is called Seascapes and it's drops. Um, Have we seen it before? 
delight. Oh, we ha um, I don't think we have. Possibly. I don't um, remember it. Generally comes out for winter. It's far play and colour changing, and there's a an olivey green mix, and the other colour is called ocean, and it goes through all blues to the deepest okay. to the lightest, and then it mixes in with this green, which goes from sort of lighter greens to khaki and everything else. I love it. Those colours. I just love the colours. You know, if you were wearing that anywhere near me and you decided that um, it wasn't actually winter anymore, it was actually July, despite the fact that the weather hasn't been told, and you took it off, you know that that would disappear, don't you? Well, I do, but fortunately, it's too big for you. Oh, what a it, shame. It, it would hang off you. So, sadly... That is that the method in your madness then? Make kind sure of. that anything blue doesn't actually fit me and it'll be fine. Yeah, it's too long in the sleeves for me. So my mother will never steal it because she's only got wee short arms. <laughs> See, and it's just the only way that I can keep certain things safe. You know what it's like. You know both of us far too well, don't you? Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, it's brilliant. I need to open a document. All oh, right, okay. I don't need to show you the document. I just oh. need to have my chat. All oh, right, okay. I thought you were going to <laughs> share for the next experimental bit of the wee dress. Uh, I had to laugh. There was a, a photograph of my cousin Kirsty today, and she'd met up with Ian, who's her elder brother. Yeah. And she's got Isla and David, her two children, in the car, and Isla's in the front seat in the toddler seat. Yeah. And Ian's staring very intently and very caringly, and Isla's showing him this tiny little sort of weeny little injury. Oh. <laughs> telling him the story of the injury. <laughs> I just thought, That's how so sweet funny, is that? that? Kids are just so adorable. Aren't <laughs> they brilliant? <laughs> Oh, I love it. So is this baby dress one that you're making or is it? Um, it's a design in progress. Woo, woo, how exciting. I know, unusual of me to do a dress, but I was inspired by your beautiful Mabel. Oh, do you like Mabel? I think she's adorable. Yeah, I was quite pleased with her. She turned out better than I thought she would, to be honest. I like the photograph as well, the staging with the little teddy bear and stuff. Yeah. Oh, you're just giving me all the compliments tonight, aren't you? Yeah, well, it won't last. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, give me more while you remember. <laughs> Pile them on me. Quick, before the tide turns. <laughs> you know how it is. Yeah, you've got to take them where you can, love. That's what it is. I'm yeah. just keeping in some ends. I cast on Fable this week. Oh, uh, with when did um, I cast the, it on? Alicia. Yeah. Oh, I can't even remember when I cast it on now. Only a couple of days ago. So um I've gone I've gone and done the I've done the top bit mm -hmm. and uh joined in the round and then I decided to do the sleeves. And then I'll carry on with the body. So that way I can try it on. It's beautiful. So, I mean, the sleeves are tiny. You literally don't actually knit any sleeve. Once you've divided. You're just putting a cuff on. Just putting a cuff on, really, yeah. Um, Is it a I, twisted rib? On the, I'm very naughty. On the pattern, it wasn't. However, you know I don't like to rib. So if I'm doing a one by one rib, I'm twisting it because it's my favourite. So I have twisted it. But you pick up you pick up the stitches mm -hmm. from the wrong side instead of from the right side. So you get like a nice, pretty little cuffy bit going on. Oh, uh, yeah. Creates the bumps. Yeah. I just really like it. So I'm, I'm just doing that. And then I'm going to put my needles back on the bottom and just. I thought this afternoon, I thought if I do my sleeves, quickly do the sleeves, then this evening I can just sit and knit while I talk to you. There's no thinking just about it. Just standing stocking it and no thinking. Yeah. Exactly. 
exactly perfect oh, are you doing any body shaping uh it's got a little bit of increasing on it so i'm just to be honest i'm just gonna go with what she's put in the pattern and see how it feels because i liked what was the other one of hers that i made ease yeah that was the one i like the shape of that so we'll see we'll see how it goes yeah so uh so i'm just weaving in the ends on the sleeves and then i'll put the body back on the needles and do you like t-shirts oh nice bit of hamilton yeah i cannot believe that she's wearing blue she's wearing green it's blue it's green <laughs> it depends on um which colour sensor node you've got in your eyes um my mother would tell you that it was green too see i thought that eliza wears green but she wears a different shade of green to go with alexander who also wears green no saws that is like just trashed everything i'm sad now no she wears some really beautiful blues well i think the blues anyway well the one the one that i do know is definitely blue and i can see is the one where she's wearing the empire line one in the helpless um, one yeah no not that one um burn all oh, right yeah later on that one's definitely blue but the rest all look green to me. And there's one where she's wearing a dress that looks green, but she looks like she's got a blue ribbon around it. I wondered why she was wearing a green dress with a blue ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she likes a blue ribbon. But blue and green should never be seen. Yeah, I don't believe in that. I don't That's believe hence in that. my cardigan. Well, it's the same kind of colour isn't it isn't it just you know a, a variation so I don't get that it's like saying black and grey shouldn't be seen together yeah well, of course they should I know it's all ridiculous isn't it yeah never mind eh so um did you watch Glee when no used to be on no I will confess now in public that that was one of my guilty secrets. I loved the singing. Did you really want to confess that? And I may have sat many an evening on my own, warbling away at the television, singing the songs with them. Not the dancing, but certainly right, the singing. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I saw on the news that um, the girl who played Santana, um, the Mexican cheerleader girl in that, um they believe that she's died uh, in a boating accident they found her four-year-old son alone in a boat oh no a few hours after they'd hired it and he had a life jacket on and hers was in the boat and there was no sign of a blesser was it literally just the two of them then yeah Nobody else that was there but has disappeared no oh no but they can't find her they've got them on cctv going to the boat they haven't found her though She's no still... apparently it's quite a muddy dirty lake sort of at the bottom and so they're hampered mm -hmm. in they're saying that they literally have to go and feel to find the body oh that's awful she sounds young as well she was quite young um, it's desperately sad that poor baby especially if he saw you know like she disappeared and stuff oh that's awful. She's not the first one. Wasn't there a guy that died from Glee a couple of years back? Um, yeah, one of them took a drug overdose. Right. I think he was Finn. And then there was another one, I think, took his own life, perhaps deliberately, because he'd allegedly been involved in um, unsavoury activities with people younger than himself. Oh. Allegedly. Allegedly, yeah. That's um, obviously it was. I don't know if he was ever convicted, and to be honest, I didn't really follow it up. Right. I'm kind of thinking it's one of them shows that's a bit cursed. That's what. That's why I brought it up. I was wondering if you know, because oh, 
that's not good no it was never one that was on my radar to be honest um i missed that it, was it was it in the sort of like late 90s early 2000s yeah it probably was because that i never really saw much tv around that time i moved to saudi um in 99 and the tv was really really rubbish out there and then obviously with the young kids and that and you know callum born in 2001 and caitlin born in 2003 i think all we ever seemed to watch was flipping the tweenies and teletubbies for many years so there, there's a there's a lot of gaps in my tv knowledge i about... found when i was going through some cds the other day i found yeah. a tweenies um christmas cd callum loved the tweenies he absolutely adored yeah, he them so funny they're around about the same age aren't they those two yeah and then Caitlin was just a little bit too old for In the Night Garden. It was just coming on when she was getting a bit too old for it. She was more into the Disney Channel. We had um, Playhouse Disney, and so she liked all the, like, Bear in the Big Blue House and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, cute, isn't it? Yeah. Who have we got tonight? Oh, Michelle says, mine's is Run, Walk run later at 10 a.m so she's kind of jibbing out a bit really 10 a.m it's going to be roasting by 10 a.m 10 a.m good luck michelle and then she's running with me at seven on sunday wow <laughs> that's one extreme to the other so who else have we got here tonight and are, are you hooking or are you knitting or are you just having a cup of tea or doing your ironing or whatever it is yeah, just morning yeah, coffee know. before you start work oh yeah yeah it's still work time in some places we're on a friday night and it's not a school night so whoop whoop for some people not me i shall be doing my run and then coming home and back out in the garden because i believe the weather is supposed to be quite pleasant tomorrow it's pretty good here for the next two weeks apart from monday which is going to be wet but it's still quite windy out there tonight i had washing out earlier today and had to put extra pegs on it to prevent it from losing <laughs> off into next door's garden i think it's definitely going to be better in the west i don't know if you noticed on the uh, weather forecast that east coast where i am there's a scott showers all the way down it for the next mm. week it's not yeah. great is it no no it's not great but ho-hum i've actually come to the conclusion you know we were having a conversation the other day saying that um august is normally absolutely pants and you can't rely on it and we haven't had a good august for a long time yeah it's normally really nice in july really nice in september i've come to the conclusion that this is august and hopefully we might have a nice August instead because it's September instead. I think we've just shifted. Yeah, everything seems to have sort of weirded around. Yeah. At the moment. So fingers crossed. This is what August is normally like. So we'll get a nice September in August. Right, I'm sure. I'll have a slip with me tea before I get yeah. to the end of the round. Mine went cold. <laughs> Michelle says it's not her choice of start time. It's I'd rather get out early and have it done. It's like yeah. once I've done the shopping and the taxi run to get Jake to college this morning, the first thing I did was make a cup of tea, get some water yeah. and yeah. then do my workout because I thought if I don't, it's not going to happen. And I only did 33 or 35 minutes today. Yeah, but that's still really I did good. 40 odd yesterday. Still um, good though. It's more it, than it, I It though. felt like hard work today. As some days it just does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Uh, you can't you can't be on your game all the time. I'm I'm gonna, you know, regret I just wonder if I'm on my game any of the time. Some <laughs> <laughs> some, some days, I just think. Uh, am i ever with this uh 
Why do we do it? It always seems like such a good idea until you're about five minutes into it. Yeah, I was kind of thinking that this morning and I'm turning on fans around the room and the dogs are looking at me going, it's like a 30 mile an hour wind out there. Just open a window, stupid. <laughs> but then afterwards, you do feel really pleased that you've done it. I was glad I'd done it once the endorphins had kicked in and I'd stopped saying nasty things to her on the yeah. screen. She's yeah. going, how are we doing? I'm thinking, go stuff yourself. <laughs> uh, you know, I'd either turn around, bend over, or show you where my shoe fits to her. <laughs> well, yeah, kind of a bit like that. Oh, I love it. Uh, yeah, so I, I just, I didn't do any exercise today other than running in and out and trying to avoid the showers and the hailstones. We had quite a bad hailstorm at one point. You don't walk the dog today either, do you? No, Friday, it's Callum's day. Bless him, he went out very early this morning. Got absolutely drenched and it had stopped raining by the time he got home and it stayed dry for a good hour. <laughs> Say lovey. But do you know what? It's an improvement because a year ago he'd have been oh I don't want to go it's raining oh and putting it off and putting it off and putting it off whereas now he just gets up and does it, it it's the time that he was going to go is the time that he goes it it's not a fight is it that's the thing no no so last night he was like oh it's Friday tomorrow isn't it I went yeah your turn to walk the dog so uh yeah there was no arguing which was oh, fine the rain, I'd be dangerous I've miscounted Oh no, what have you done? Too many? Too little? I don't know. It was on my previous row, so I'm just going to tink it back. I think I've only done it once. Oh, yeah. oh no, it was on this row. I've actually got it right. Oh, that's okay then. No, I haven't. Oh, I thought you said you'd got it right. I thought I'd got it right, but I haven't. Oh. How have I got? <laughs> Oh, oh, right. Okay. Have you worked it out? I believe so. Yeah, I've um, I've done a pearl instead of um, a decrease. Hmm. Interesting. In the previous row. That's interesting. Round, should say. Round, yes. Yeah, I haven't got. So, Caitlin and I started watching The Haunting of Hill House eventually this afternoon. Oh, do you know, I really don't fancy that. And it's because I watched the original movie from, like, I don't know, forever ago, a black and white one. And oh. it terrified me. You never actually see yeah. the presence. You never see it. And it's the dread and... There's two girls sharing a bedroom and they push the beds together and they hold hands. Oh. And then one of them wakes and the lights are on and she's screaming, stop crushing my hand, stop crushing my hand. And her bed's in midair at the opposite side of the room and her friend's down and over there and not touching her. And it's stuff like that. And honestly, it terrified me as a youngster. Horrid. It is a bit <laughs> episodes on Netflix and we've watched the first two this afternoon um to be fair I don't really think Caitlin was paying that much attention she spent more time looking at her phone than anything um and it'll probably be something that I end she didn't seem that fast but it, it is creepy and, and it's like well what's going on I don't understand it's a bit I don't know was the movie like it, it keeps flashing from present time to back when the kids were well the, the, I, I um, can't I can't remember to be honest and I right. was probably about 14 when I saw it all right okay and I have made a point of never watching that movie again right Mike would love it okay and I'd be awake all night and he'd be awake all night because I was awake all night well, and every little noise move or anything else, I'd be bricking it. Yeah. So far, it's okay. Um, it's it's creepy, 
Um, and I'd prefer not to watch it on my own, but it's okay. I'd be all right to watch it knowing there's other people in the house. Mm. Um, Phil wouldn't want to watch it actually. He'd he'd be watching it going, well, this is pants. It's not. But I don't know if maybe it's just not got going and it's it's slow burning on purpose. I'm not really sure, to be honest. With a movie, you've got to get in there quicker, haven't you? Well, you've got an hour and a half, see. Yeah, maybe yeah. two at a push. Two hours to get people's attention. Yeah, this is 10 lots of 40, 40 minutes-ish. So I don't know if they're just going for a slow burn. It's going to get a bit creepier. I'm not sure. I don't know if anybody else has watched it. Alison's been watching it. Yeah. She might be able to answer your question. Yeah. No, it was one of those where I looked at it and thought, no, I'm not doing this. And funnily enough, when lockdown started, Mark Kermode uh, oh, on the BBC yeah. site did oh, his list of the 10 scariest films he's ever watched in his life. And bearing the, in mind the hundreds of thousands of films he's watched. Yeah. And that's his number five. Really? What was his number one? Um, I can't remember if it was Nosferatu, the original um, Dracula. All right. Um, again, that's quite creepy. And a lot of it is the dread of what you don't see. Do you know what? I think the older ones are better at that because the modern ones are all about showing you everything and trying to use graphics and... I think the older ones, because they couldn't do so much, they did leave more to your imagination, didn't they? And it, I think it's more terrifying. Yeah, without a doubt. I, think I remember, I've always hated scary movies, but my friends used to love them. You know, it's like when you're a teenage girl, you go for sleepovers and everybody wants to watch a scary movie. Yeah, and some of the ones that really stuck with me, I couldn't even tell you what they were, but there was things where um, they went for sleepovers in the school and everyone ended up dead. There was one, I have a, a really vivid memory of some guy having his mouth sewn together and they strung him up in the fireplace. And when they set a fire, the family or whoever it was that lived there set a fire. This guy ended up being roasted alive, but he couldn't even scream because his mouth was sewn shut. I don't know. It's just weird stuff. Yeah, and it's not very really positive either, is it? I don't, I don't like the cruelty that kind of no. occurs in those kind of films. So I, I just try not to, not to play along. Really, I won't. I won't watch anything like Saw. Or... No, I wouldn't. Um, what's the other one? The Human Centipede or something. I don't mind a scary movie, one that has things like ghosts and stuff or um, the crazy people, because that could happen. That could be real, couldn't it? You know, somebody yeah. just loses it. Um, but just the violence for no reason. I, I don't understand how any com anyone can watch somebody just being chopped up. I don't I don't get it. Well, and I don't see the need for most of it. Um, it's a, a standing joke in our house that yeah. I don't like the way that women are overtly sexualised in certain films. Okay. And I absolutely loved Mar Margot or Margot Robbie, whatever it is, um, oh in that I, Tonya. I thought she was amazing as Tonya. Was, yeah. Fantastic performance. Yeah. But in Suicide Squad with will smith where she plays harley quinn i'm yeah. sorry but the camera spent more time up the crack of her backside examining <laughs> the stitching on her shorts and counting any hair that was there than it did on the rest of her entire body and i just oh, thought it, it was over and and disgusting but you yeah. contrast that with a female director for wonder woman and yeah, yeah, she's got a short skirt, but it's a leather skirt with armour and stuff like that. And at no point was it targeting her backside. She climbs a ladder to go over the, the top in the World War One trenches. And the camera is on her, the, her calves and the yeah. muscles in her lower legs. There's nothing overt or trashy about it. There's no 
you know, lean over, accidentally reveal the massive boobage shots or anything unnecessary like that. And I much more enjoyed that because she was the main character. And Chris yeah, yeah. himself said, you know, I'm just a supporting actor. Wonder Woman is the hero. It's nice to see a woman not just get herself in a, in a situation and stand there and scream and cry and wait for the man to come along. Yeah. And that's the problem. I always hated princess stories when I was little because yeah. I was always saying to my dad, well, why can't she get out of this herself? Why does she have to wait for a man? Yeah. What are we teaching our girls? Well, that's the problem, isn't it? Um, yeah. I just, yeah. That's why I like Mulan, actually. I do quite like the Mulan movie. She's a strong woman. Is this the remake or the... I haven't seen the remake yet. It's supposed to have been. It was. It was supposed to have been released um, at the end of March. I think it was like a week after lockdown or something. Okay. Um, but um, it's been it's been delayed. But the original one's just as good because she goes to war dressed up as a boy, doesn't she? Because she can't join the army as a girl. They won't let her. Yeah. She wants to fight for her, her family and her country, as you would. You want to defend your family. So she dresses up as a boy and able to do it. And it's a pity she has to dress up as a boy. But at the end of the day, she's still showing strength of character by doing what she needs to do to look after them, didn't she? You know, oh, absolutely. I, I do like Mulan. I think it's good. And Pocahontas, she's quite a good, strong character as well, actually. She is. Yeah. She was true, though, wasn't she? Wasn't she an actual real person, Pocahontas? She was. Well, let's see. Every girl needs a real heroine to look up to. Well, I like with Wonder Woman that little boys have wanted to dress up as Wonder Woman as well. And yeah. that that gender bias is changing. Kids don't care, though, do they? Well, they don't grow up with those preconceived ideas. It's us idiots that teach them. Callum had Barbies. I remember when he was little and um, and he was asking for Barbies. And my niece um, was just getting to that age where she was too old for them. She, she sent him all her Barbies and oh. played with them. He didn't care. A doll's a doll, isn't it? A toy's a toy. Well, yeah. Jake liked teddy bears and sort of cuddly ties and things like that. And he's still got my, um, you know, when you go to touristy spots and they have the gift shops and they've got those yeah. giant, they're not life size, but they're certainly as big as a Labrador or something where you can get like a, a leopard or oh, yeah. whatever. And I've, got, the price I've, of a house. I've got a leopard upstairs that Kevin bought me when jake was born i was say did he need to take out a mortgage to pay for it because they're not cheap those probably that's probably, <laughs> why, that's probably why we kept it yeah jake always tells everybody it's his and i, I always say to him actually it's not i had to i had right. to fight to football to get that yeah i <laughs> love it yeah i'll tell you what we were talking about the other day oh here he is oh See, speak of the devil. Whoa. Where's he off to? He's off out tonight. He, the boozer. Oh. And he's been and had his hair cut at the barbers and they went out for a meal last night. Wow. Yeah. Is he one of the red shirts? Yeah. Excellent. Uh, yeah, we were talking about weebles. Oh, yeah. Gotta love a weeble. Well, weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Exactly. Although apparently they do, because when I look in the mirror, I look like a weeble, and I fell down. <laughs> You're obviously not a weeble, so It's then. not entirely accurate, is it? <laughs> You're obviously not a weeble. Not weebly enough. Not weebly enough. I've got, I've got myself a treat. I think I might crack into it. Do you reckon? Oh, that looks fun. I can eat this. 
I mean, what is it? It's just sugar in that. I've not had anything sweet really this week. I bought some plain fat free quark, quark, however you want to say it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, because that's fairly low in lactose. Cool. And I don't seem to react to it as much as I would a regular yogurt. So I've been having that with my fruit of an evening with a bit of sweetener in it. And actually, that's been quite nice. Mm. I'm just having my flump. It is um, 341 calories per 100 grams. Right. And there's 20 grams in this. Okay. So it's not light on calories. Considering it's pretty much just gelatin and sugar. It's unsurprising, really, isn't it? It is. I don't know. It's taken me forever to put this back on the needles. Is this the lower body bit that you've had on a thread? Yeah. I needed the needle. Otherwise, it had just stayed on, but I needed it. I'm halfway there. I'll be there soon. And then it will be stocking it first. Yay, my favourite. So what's everybody else knitting? Is anybody with us? Have we got any crocheters? Did Michelle cast on for her cardigan or sweater? Well, yeah, I don't know what Michelle did. Wasn't she doing the, the jumper that she didn't want to do or something? Or I think she mentioned the jumper of doom or something like that. Yeah. Something which like which that. made me slightly suspicious that she's not enjoying it. Yeah, life's too short. I do believe she had squishy mail, though, today. Oh, right. Is this um, squishy mail from your shared order? It is, I believe. It's exciting. What did you get? Um, something. Michelle will have to tell me what I got. I can't remember. <laughs> Drops, drop something. I got three lots. I remember I got three lots. Um, L, one was, Safran. Yeah, one was Paris. blue. One was blue. One was, it was one blue was, and a brown, wasn't there? Mustard. Yeah. Totally not my colours whatsoever, you know. Never been known. Yeah, right. Um, oh, Rita's here. What are you doing, Rita? Hey, Rita. Who have you got? Something on the hook. Hooking away. So to speak. Earlier in the day, isn't it? Yeah, it's early earlier in the day for Rita. So she definitely wouldn't be having an adult beverage. No, but, but I mean it's five o'clock somewhere, but Well yeah. Which is the only stipulation. Might really. cause chaos with the crochet though. Yeah. Oh, Don't the jumper that. of doom. She's still trying to finish it. Well, I want to see a progress photograph. And what's wrong with it? Why is it the jumper of doom? Are you just bored with it because you want to be knitting something nicer? Or is it for someone else? Yeah. Mm. That, that can be a double-edged sword, can't it? Because you yeah. can either be excited to get it done and off your hands, or you can just be thinking, oh, God, I've got to make this for so-and-so, and I hate it. Yeah, and I don't even get to wear it at the end. Yeah, that's even worse, isn't it? Yeah. See, I'm looking forward to wearing this. Ooh, Rita's working on a Tunisian crochet scarf. Oh, that sounds nice. What pattern are you doing, Rita? It says packs on there. Is that the pattern, do you think? Might be. Sounds interesting. I've never done Tunisian crochet. Is it more like crochet than knitting? Um, it's got lots of stitches, hasn't it? More like knitting with lots of stitches, but you kind of pick them up and work along to the end, and then you work them off on the way back. 
and then you've picked them up again. So is it a bit like lots of casting on and casting off? In many respects. Oh, that's interesting. It it does look really good, and you can get some really interesting textures with it. Hmm. But yeah. I'm no expert. I've only done a handful of swatches with Tunisian, so right. I'm not the one to ask. It's not my. Oh, Michelle's added a photo. I think she might have added a photo of either squishy mail, or of the jumper of doom. Let's have a look. Oh, Rita says it's more like knitting. Oh, and Christine's just posted what she's been working on. Oh, excellent. So I'll, nice. I'll share in a second. Yeah. Just, um... I like to see what everyone's doing. Okay, so okay. Can you see that now? Oh yeah, is that a baby jumper? She says, given a large amount of snuggly chenille yarn during lockdown, not something she'd normally knit with, but made a gorgeous snuggly jumper for a two-year-old granddaughter. Yeah, all right. Oh, that looks nice. Yeah, that's lovely. Looks like the James Brett, doesn't it? Hmm. That's pretty. And here we are, progress, photo of doom. That's mm -hmm. a beautiful colour. It's nice light green, isn't it? Show it some love. I think that's lovely. In a lovely yarn bowl. It is really pretty. What yarn is that, Michelle? Do tell us. Mm. Not that we're obsessing about it at all, honest. Not interested about yarn at all. Well, we'll have to have a look for that pattern, Rita. Yeah. I guess there's more and more patterns of um, Tunisian crochet coming out all the time. It's very popular. I know Ruth uh, Brash does quite a few and Alison and a few others, Samantha Stitches, um, maybe Rita, and maybe Nita, um, were doing a sort of Tunisian along oh, right. in the after party earlier in the year. Yeah, there's quite a few of them making a particular shawl because it was a good beginner pattern. I did the swatch for it. Yeah, some yarn um, and then bolted down a rabbit hole of some knitting or something else. So oh, can Mich you... Michelle's explaining what's wrong with the jumper of doom in that she's pulled it out twice for different patterns and she's not pulling it out again. All oh, right. Well, that's good. Just beat it into submission. Stylecraft, it's the special DK in Meadow. Oh, uh, yeah. yarn. It washes really well. Cool. So, Rita, what yarn are you using for your Pax scarf? Mm. So, can you Tunisian crochet? I can do basics, but I'm not good at it. So, obviously, I mean, I don't really know anything about it. Can you do all different things like knitting? There's all sorts of textures um, that you can create by using the hook in different ways. It is exceptionally clever. And um, doing certain stitches, like Tunisian simple stitch, can look uh -huh. exactly like a knitted garment. Wow. Is it? faster than knitting like crochet is faster than knitting i don't believe so but then again i'm not particularly good at it so i don't have the speed to be able to say with any honesty oh and our conversation yesterday about the movie me before you oh yeah 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 red eyes cried buckets told you yeah. what did you it, think it was the two now? hanky two hanky job Oh, it was bad, wasn't it? What about the eyebrows? God, yeah. Um, I wanted to um, shape them and <laughs> slap them on occasion. Uh, so yeah. Rita's using Knit Picks palette. That is a lovely yarn. What colour are you using, Rita? Or is it a 
is it more than one color that you're using do you tell um michelle would love to learn chin is in crochet it looks amazing it does and there's some really great patterns so maybe have a chat to rita about it she'll be able to point you in the direction of something suitable for a beginner yeah yeah see i told you that you'll want to like oh here we go we've got a picture oh how did she manage to put that on there i have no idea i think she just added the link no one else has managed to do that i think it's because it's a link rather than loading up a photograph so i'll do a share screen chrome tab image here we go can you see oh. that that's lovely and it does look um like broken rib mm. I really like that denim -y blue, Rita. Because you can get more shapes with um, crochet than you can knitting, can't you? It's easier to create fabric that's a different shape, if you know what I mean. You can have a lot of fun with it. Um, yeah. It's all sorts of shaping you can do. The same as you would in knitting. It's just stitches are sometimes taller than rows of knitting might be if you're using doubles or trebles or whatever so you know you yeah. have to take that into account i mean i can do a bit of crochet i can do some of it i'm just so slow that i get frustrated with myself and just think well if i was knitting something i'd have been finished by now well yeah but the thing is you'll never ever build up the speed on michelle's saying she loves that color as well and rita's telling us it's called opal heather Oh, gorgeous. That's really, I really like the knit picks yarns. I like knit picks. And they're not too expensive. Well, no, they're not. And when you order off them, they include all of the import duties and taxes and whatnot. Yeah. yeah so what you pay is what you pay. There's no surprises, is there? No. Hmm. Well, I will be getting my hands on my squishy yarn on Sunday. Nice. Thanks for adding the link, Rita. I really enjoyed seeing that. That's really yeah, that good. Very good. Oh, I'm a bit tired tonight. I don't know what's wrong with me. I didn't sleep well last night. Something woke me up. There was a bang or something, and I don't know if I dreamt it. Although at one point. I obviously had watched the news, you know, about yeah. that crane dropping through the top. Oh, of the yeah. Because I was convinced there was a hole in the roof and something oh, no. had fallen through it. Oh, no. That's not a good dream to be having. No. And then I put the light on and, of course, there's totally nothing there. And I'm thinking, you moron. Uh, right. Nita's saying, Nita Notter is running a Tunisian, Tunisian crochet crochet along and um, we're on the ninth week so is it, is it a stitch a week with that neater it sounds like she's teaching you something new every week that sounds like a really good way to get started yeah. thanks for telling us about that that's awesome i love a cow it just keeps you motivated a bit doesn't it it does i quite like to do the odd test knit every now and then as well because yeah. when you've got a deadline for someone else and it's always intriguing to me to see how they do, you know, how they handle a particular part of the pattern or how they work yeah. and or how they deal with the testers. Or... I like to read knitting patterns, even if I don't make them. I don't know why. I just like to collect them so that I've got them. <laughs> well, they keep you warm that at night. They're mine. They're my patterns. Yeah. The more you've got, the better. Yeah. it's a good job there you know a lot of them are digital because i think you'd be drowning by now isn't it i probably would and i'd be in a whole host of trouble if i had to find some you the council this door. Thank you. you never speak to me again you know like when you watch the hoarders programs on the tv yeah. you have to counsel him because you know it's getting a bit of a problem yeah that that would be me yeah yeah they're not laughing at my yarn stash now that we've had the pandemic though are they oh no 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 nobody was laughing at the yarn stashing so you know 
I was right all along. Well, yeah, we knew that. I just... How are you doing on your stitch picker up in? I've got them up. I'm just... Well... <laughs> <laughs> oh. <Not> enough news. <laughs> I'm just I'm pulling out my um I yarn. thought we were in a carry on film for a moment. <laughs> oh it's getting desperate, isn't it? It's like we need to see James to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or a bit of Tem Terry Thomas, maybe. Oh hello. Yeah. <laughs> What is it the kids say? Because we say, um, as the actress said to the bishop or something, and the kids don't say that. They say um, that's what she said. Oh, do they? Yeah, apparently, according to Caitlin. Okay. Yeah. Yay, my yarn is out. Woohoo. Who are? Exactly. Rita says, who would laugh at a yarn stash? No one would laugh at a yarn stash. Certainly not anybody here. No. Certainly not anybody here. No, because we've got better manners. Yes, exactly. And, you know, no yarn is a bad yarn, is there? No, there's only the wrong yarn for the particular project. Exactly. You just haven't found that right project yet. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really intrigued to see what Michelle makes with that mustardy yarn, the, the sheepiest. I think we should just leave the boring sweater that we're bored of for a little while and cast on something new. You see how she's enabling there? Uh, right, so Nita says, uh, different stitch every week made into an eight inch block so you'll have an afghan at the end. <laughs> She does really good tutorials for left-handers and right-handers. That's really good. See, that would be ideal for Michelle to start on. Yeah, absolutely would. Thank you for that, Nisa. That's brilliant. Yeah, fab. And there are only so many weeks into it. It's easy to catch up. It wouldn't be hard to catch up at all, and particularly as you sort of building on your skills every week, every block, yes, might become a little bit more challenging, but then it won't feel as challenging because you've built on the skills with the last one. Exactly. If that makes any sense at all. Yeah. Definitely makes sense. So I've got a scan appointment through the post. Oh, excellent. Is it for... I think next it's week. for the stupid lump on my head. It's for next Friday. Next Friday. That's when I'm getting my hair done. Oh, 12 o'clock on Friday. Oh, cool. Got to take my own mask. Right. I'm thinking of, of going with a Hannibal Lecter mask just for a laugh. <laughs> and a bottle of Chianti and some fava beans, you know. So. I think you should. <laughs> Oh, Michelle's saying, yeah, can definitely leave the boring jumper. I think you should leave it now, Michelle. Go on to your mustard. Were you going to go for your stepping stones, Cardi, with that, or whatever you were going to go for, and just take a break? Sometimes you just need one, don't you? Yeah. So I should hear next week from the uh, Boobage Clinic. So um, when you when you go, is that at the local hospital or somewhere else? It is at the local hospital. I was given a choice. Right. Um, there's three in our health trust. Yeah. And they used to send you down to Lancaster, which wow. would mean me getting the train or getting hospital transport because they don't like you to drive yourself back if you've had a biopsy or an aspiration. Right. Um, so I'd have to be driven down there and I just said look barrel's easier because I could take my car to barrel and I could get my brother to park it round from his house and then he could drive me home if necessary mm -hmm. and he's working from home at the moment so that would work quite well yeah, yeah. and then you just put the car up at a later date when as and when can't you yeah absolutely when I was fine within a few hours of the biopsy I had a few years ago. So, you know, it was no bother. 
I mean, worst case scenario, could you just go and sit around your brothers, have a cup of tea for a little while and then maybe drive yourself home? Absolutely, yeah. And he lives uh, about five minutes drive from the hospital, so he could pick me up and I could have a quick visit with him. Yeah, Socially anyway. distance in visiting, obviously. Well, you know, you're allowed to go into other people's houses now, apparently. Well, and his wife's a key worker at Tesco's, so they've never really had mm. the security in the, you know, that she's always been exposed to it in one way right. or another. Yeah. Well, I rang my mother-in-law today. I saw her Wednesday last week. Um, and then I was going to go around today because I was expecting it to rain. And I thought, all the time it's nice. I'll be out in the garden. And then when it's raining, I'll go around and see her. So I rang her up. No answer. And it was sunny at that point. So I went out in the garden and I worked in the garden for a little while. And then I rang her again when the first rain cloud come over and started hailing and uh, and I was talking to her for a bit and she said that her granddaughter Becky was going to be going round for a visit with her husband and two kids I think so I was like oh I'll leave it then because for one she doesn't want everyone going all at once anyway for two I don't want to be there when other people are there and um, I just like to spread her visits out because I think there's no point sitting there on your own all week and then have everybody come all at once yeah that's just overwhelming isn't it and what you want is a bit of contact every day or every few days yeah exactly so so i left it but while i was on the phone so i just talked to her on the phone for about half an hour and while i was on there my sister-in-law i heard her voice and she's been going into my mother-in-law so she's in her 80s and she's you know she's not doing too great in some areas but doing okay in others and my sister-in-law goes in every day. She um, she goes in first thing in the morning, makes her a cup of coffee and takes it up to her and, you know, does a couple of bits and bobs. Mm. And then she goes back in and out throughout the day, just like pops in because she only lives a few doors up. Um, so I heard her voice and she said, um, I could hear her saying she wasn't going in. Um, she said, I'm not coming in, I'm not coming near you because I've just taken Peter, which is the guy she lives with. I've just taken Peter and dropped him off to have a COVID test. And, I, and I'm thinking, all right, what's going on here? So um, I don't know if he's got symptoms or what, but it doesn't sound very good. Um, I don't know if I told you, but the other two weeks ago or a week ago, one one Saturday, I don't think it was last Saturday. I think it might have been the Saturday before because it was before all the rules changed. Yeah. Um, she had videos on Facebook Live of her at this this granddaughter who was going around to see my mother in law at her house at a party for her birthday. There was quite a lot of them. On Facebook Live? Yeah, well, you can't legislate for stupid, can you? And now um, it looks like somebody's got symptoms. Would anybody like a reminder of what homegrown looks like? Oh, uh, yeah. The pattern that Michelle has um, purchased. Oh, yes, please. Obviously not on my recommendation or the fault of anything I've done. Oh, I like that one. I remember that one now. Is that a DK? It is a DK. Love it. But it's four mil and five and a half mil needles. It's 16 by 24. I do love that. It is really nice. Um, I don't know if I said last time, but Melissa, who designed this, her husband's got, um, we, we call it Morton Neuron. They call it oh. ALS or, or is it Lou Garrett's? I think it's ALS. Yeah. Because ALS to me is additional learning support. Yeah. That's why I work. Oh, oh, that was something that happened to me today. 
we've got um we've got a group chat on um whatsapp with all the people from the uh als what you call it department that i worked in mm -hmm. so all of us when, when we got put into lockdown somebody put us all into a group chat together yeah right and i don't i don't partake in it but i just look in it every now and again and see if there's anything interesting well there was a conference the college had a big online conference on friday for the end of term and i didn't go to it because um something about if you're only if you term time only you don't have to go and, and as far as i'm concerned i'm not working at the minute anyway so why would i spend all day partaking in activities yeah for no reason. anyway i had to look in the i had to look in this group thingy the other afterwards and there was loads of messages saying um well done to this girl rachel and well done emma and i just assumed they were talking about emma parker and i just thought nothing else of it anyway i've had a little quick look at the um video of the online conference just sort of like scooted through it and on fast forward and uh, and i got given a star award not oh, very good yeah so it was me <laughs> nice of them to let you know in advance well yeah yeah just a little you know just thought i'd tell you that <laughs> oh quick look oh look at that it's gorgeous this color very imaginatively is called pale green it's like oh. a very light sagey color couldn't they have called it something more interesting? I don't know. What yarn did you say it was? I think it's Peyton's 100% cotton DK. All right. Yeah, mercerized cotton machine washable. And I've got a darker green to add some highlights and Ooh. little embellishment. You're all about green today, aren't you? I just felt like it would be a change. You sure it's not blue? No. <laughs> uh, Emma may be tortured by me, says Michelle. I do not understand the pattern already. Fair enough. It's because it's top down and yeah. oh, my favourite. You'll love it, Michelle. Once once you've done one that way, you'll be a convert. <coughs> it's a lot better, isn't it? Well, Jake's gone. When will you see him again? There's a song in that. Tomorrow. When tomorrow lunchtime probably oh lunchtime. thank you rita rita says that's lovely it is lovely it will be very cute i'm thinking of doing the pattern up to sort of the underarm area yeah and doing a little sort of empire waistband and then the upper part of the little dress and possibly a little sleeve oh or i might just do some rib bands and make it a little sleeveless summer version i don't know Dresses are for you. You can't beat a nice little summer dress. I should probably have made it in a bigger size for um, Grace, but then they've already had quite a lot off me. And if I start sending too much for one, I'll end up with Sally getting jealous for her little lad. <laughs> yeah. And then you'll have to be making trousers and things. Yeah, which isn't so bad. At some point, I'll have to do some rompers or something for. Uh, yeah. I've still got loads of ideas for baby stuff. Well, I've still got loads of wool, so that's no bad thing. But I just really wanted to take a break and knit someone else's pattern for a few days. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? And you get a garment for you without having to do any of the maths or the headachey stuff. Well, that's the thing. I don't have to sit there and worry about whether something works or not. Yeah. I just dropped my wool. Sorry. It's organic cotton, that one, isn't it? Yeah, this Beautiful. is the pure life. Yeah. It's lovely. I'm on um the third ball, although I did start my fourth one for the sleeves, but that barely took anything. Right. Um so I'll just use that one. This one's nearly done. The third one's nearly done. Um 
and I'm probably yeah, that's about... it. I, I dug out a load of um, CDs for in the car. All right. Uh, yesterday we had um, what's the story? Morning Glory. Oh wow! Here. And today we had um, Robbie Williams. I've been expecting you. Love that album. There isn't a bad song on it, is there? That every single one you want to sing to. To be honest, I really like all Robbie's songs. Do you know my favourite Robbie Williams song? Go on. Me and my monkey. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you not love that song? I like that he's really playful and that he's fun, but he always frustrated me when he was younger because he's got a beautiful voice and he would not put the effort into looking after it. No. And now he realises that that's what he has to do and his voice has improved dramatically again. But as a youngster, I don't think he, he took his gifts for granted. But do you know, it's the same with all youngsters, with everything. That's what they say, youth is wasted on the young. Yeah, I suppose it is. You know. I, I you've said it before about yourself that you didn't realize when you were actually yeah. well, when I was a total hottie yeah and well you still are too. don't put yourself down but you know yeah now it's more about the confidence and the fact that I don't take any bs it's more exactly. about my attitude than it is about my appearance but then it was absolutely about how I looked <laughs> I think when you get older, you really do. Uh, they say that a lot of um, sex appeal in a woman is her confidence. For sure. And if you feel sexy, you look sexy. Yeah. So. And that's I'll tell why. You who's looking good. Go on. You are. Sorry. Um, I'll tell you who's looking really good. Um, on Netflix today, it came through with a reminder of uh, you know where you've sort of bookmarked a film to be told when it's released or whatever and it's called the old guards and it was uh charlie's Theron. oh i like her i love her um i really enjoyed atomic blonde not least because of the 80s soundtrack which was just yeah. my teenage years um but this particular one she plays an immortal warrior oh and I thought it was a really clever plot. Um, but for a woman of 44 doing action movies, my God, she looks phenomenal. Mm. I'm a woman of 44, don't I look phenomenal? Of course you do. <laughs> Not Charlize Theron phenomenal, though. Well, and you've got a bit more boobage going on than I she. I have got quite a bit. She'd be quite jealous of your boobage. Yeah. You? Actually, I mean, it, I, it is decreased dramatically since I lost weight I mean what is that about why do we always lose it there um I don't know it's not fair it's not the best design is it I don't think God will be winning any design awards because what sort of idiot puts a bag of water and then has the opening at the bottom and then doesn't expect it to leak well yeah it's not exactly yeah. you know choice engineering and is then it when you have a baby lets the baby sit on said bag of water and kick yes. said bag of water bounce on it yeah yeah it doesn't it doesn't help yeah, it's, does it? it's there's, there was no real thought put into that was there <laughs> no no not at all from an engineering who else i think looks hot and i do have a bit of a girl crush on her scarlett yeah. hansen oh god yeah. yeah oh my goodness that is one hot woman yeah, she is gorgeous. I love her in, in the Marvel movies, Black Widow. Yeah, she's she's brilliant. She's sassy and flirty and yeah. uses confidence, but actually isn't. Yeah, she, she definitely puts on a front, doesn't she, bless her? Yeah, and it's a shame that she never really gets it on with the Hulk, because, you know. I know. Mark Ruffalo, woof. Woof, woof. <laughs> yeah. Oh, talking of that, woof woof. <laughs> Do you know um Blackadder, Rick Mayo? Yeah. What's he called? Something heart. Flash heart. Flash heart. Yeah. Anne's husband, Ian, 
we we go around there in the mornings for a seven o'clock run and 90 percent of the time he's there in his pants right and we always say that he's just like him he's like woof <laughs> <laughs> And we just really take the mickey out of him. He likes the taste of a man's tongue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny. Yeah. I, I, I think he was just amazing and perfect for that role. But in Blackadder uh, Goes Forth, the First World War one. Yeah. Where he, he uses Baldrick for a footstool. And then says, um, what's the comment? Is it, can you feel the wind blowing through your hair? Well, you will in a moment. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and there's this ripping fart noise on his head. <laughs> oh, he was a brilliant actor, wasn't he, Rick Mayo? Oh, just amazing. Absolutely amazing. I quite liked him in the episodes of Jonathan Creek that he did as well, where he was the police officer in that never watched jonathan creek i think that was again in in my dark tv period um which is quite funny that there's loads of stuff i think we, we managed to watch a bit of buffy right eastenders and i never watched eastenders before or since but it was one of the few programs in english <laughs> Yeah, I've, I haven't really watched EastEnders since the days of Den and Angie, so that tells you how long ago that was. You are, it's never been the same since they left, really. And uh, Sharon and, um, was it Phil, were all right. Right. Um, moments. They were a bit like the modern Den and Angie, I suppose, but no one can beat the originals. Isn't uh, the girl who played Michelle Fowler, isn't she one of the directors or something now? Oh, She's a know. TV director or film director. Right. Hmm. I think I'd rather be behind the camera instead of in front of it. I think that's the view that she took. Yeah. And, you know, she wasn't the most gorgeous looking girl, bless her, was she? Well, she was a nice looking girl, but she was going through some really bad acne and the press, you know what they're like. They'll yeah. be like garbage at every opportunity and they were horrible to her. And it's no wonder that her confidence took a tumble because people just crushing everything you do and everything you say based on your looks. Didn't she, have she was a damn fine actress. Hair. Sorry? Didn't she have dark brown curly hair? Yeah. Yeah. I can't I can't really remember much. I remember was it her dad was called Arthur and didn't he steal the Christmas money or something? He did. Oh, those were the days, eh? Yeah, happy telly. Yeah. Yeah, it I just got sick of how miserable it was. It was so negative all the time. And when I was in hospital having Jake, all the girls were crying because Tiffany had been killed. All right. And I'm sat there thinking, she's not been killed. She's gone to do a couple of movies. Don't know Tiffany. She isn't actually dead, you know. Don't know Tiffany. Who's Tiffany? Um. Oh, God, what's she called? Uh, Martine McCutcheon. Ah, love, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she went on to better things. She she's went got a nice thing in voice as well. <laughs> I liked her album. I had that album. Yeah, I might have that somewhere in the depths. Yeah, that could I be. Liked, um, some of the neighbours people that then went on to be singers, Natalie and Brulia, I quite like. Oh, she was brilliant. I love that song, Torn. Yeah. Yeah. I can't think of another one that she did, though. How bad is that? No, I can't think of anything else. Oh, there you are. Michelle's been Googling. Susan Tully was Michelle uh, Fowler. Uh, that sounds and like. Was, and you had to say it as Michelle. Michelle. Not Michelle. Yeah, Michelle. So Susan Tully sounds like a character out of Game of Thrones. It does rather, doesn't it? Yeah. They had the Tullys, didn't they? Yeah, not in the end. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> That's funny. 
Yeah, should have bent, bent the knee. Oh. I'm saying, should have bent yeah. the knee. If you ask, who was it? Was it Rab or someone? You only do that for the Queen and your wife. Dominic Rab, yeah. Is it him? Yeah. Come on then, let's have a flash. Okay. Oh, it's gorgeous. I think it's going to be very cute. It's going to be lacy. Yeah, and a nice little wavy hem. Oh. And I think that would be fun on the sleeve as well. I'll just have to play around with the stitch counts. You might have to have a, a little central bit rather yeah. than an all-over pattern. I don't know. That's the thing. It, yeah. It's all down to stitch counts, isn't it? That's the problem with designing. It's okay working out simple things. It's got You've got to play around with your numbers a bit, haven't you? Yeah, it's a lot of maths. <laughs> And I always hated maths. Um, I actually don't mind it for pattern stuff. And it's surprising how I can do formulas and things like that that I could never do at school. But only because it gets me to where I want. Yeah. I never, I, never saw a practical application for it when I was at school. I actually think I probably still do all my pattern maths in a very difficult convoluted round the houses kind of way somebody else probably would look at it and go yeah you do this this and this and it's done and i'm still there three hours later but i've never been good at maths so and that's coming from someone who used to teach maths to year six kids <laughs> <laughs> but it was easier because you used to make sure that you knew exactly what was going to happen all your sums you'd worked out what you were going to what examples you were going to use beforehand and you knew all the answers yeah there was no surprises there was no like ad hoc stuff so you can do it when it's like that but i, I just i've never been very good i think the problem is i get the right answer but because I think that I'm not very good at maths, I doubt the answer. And then I go around the houses 20 times, double checking the answer. So one of the best things I did was that class with that um, fine, finer Gorberstein on Crafty Blueprint. Hmm. It's going back to the Crafty brand, isn't it? Yeah, I heard something about that. Yeah, there was an email came out the other day, so that'll be pleasing. Is it going to go back to a pay for what you want type thing rather than a it, there'll be a subscription and a pay for your classes option so right. they give more both models by the sound of it okay and they've got more content that they're in the process of creating and ready to add so they seem to have a plan it all sounded quite proactive so i'm you know i'm prepared to give them a chance well it stops everyone having to download everything as well i suppose Oh yeah, lots lots less effort. But that the spreadsheet that Fanna Goberstein takes you through creating, mm. I've then adapted and added in different columns and a different model for doing my modular sweaters and then a different one for baby stuff. So I have a spreadsheet with different sizes and things like that for each pattern and then it's got a a sheet within that for each each variant so the modular one for adults is on on one sheet and then within that same document on another tab is the four ply baby the worsted baby mm -hmm. you know, the chunky baby version and, and so on so they're all together and I can do a lot of copying and pasting and then just changing stitch counts and gauge and it does the calculations and then I have a row where I edit it round it up or round it down to make it work with what I want yeah, yeah. pattern and everything yeah cool and I do have a very old copy of sweater wizard and one of um knit something knit wear right w-a-r-e mm. um they just about clunk and work through but it just gives me the opportunity if i'm doing a drop sweater or a top down or a yoke or something to just check my maths versus my measurements 
Yeah. And it's just a sanity check. I don't use it for the pattern itself, but I use it to to check my maths and make sure that my proportions are going to be right and how that will look. And I'll create the schematic in that and then screenshot it. Cool. And that works really well. Sounds good. Yeah, I quite like it. I mean, it was very cheap software for what it was. Um, but they've stopped doing any updates and stuff now. So you, you can't you can't even buy a license key now, which is gutting. That is sad. So I'm very careful to have lots of backups. <laughs> Make sure I don't accidentally no, delete it or no, kill it. You are, you are the, 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 the techno whiz. You should make your own version. I have my moments. You wouldn't have thought I was very techno whizzy when I was on the phone to my client who was being scammed earlier in the week. Oh. Going, switch everything off, switch it off now. And he's going, but they're fixing it. And I'm going, like, they're effing scamming you, you moron. Switch it off. What do you think that they were doing? He thought that they were from the tech support from Hewlett Packard. Well, they just rang him up out of the blue. They'd spoofed the number of the finance company that he bought the computer through that is a part of Hewlett Packard. They then rang him back on a series of different numbers to ask other questions and things like that, supposedly to verify his identity and steal more information. And I checked it. I asked him to put the phone down on them and say he needed to go to talk to his business partner over an urgent matter and could they ring back in half an hour. And while I got him off the phone with them and onto the phone with me, I'm going like, if you switch everything off right now, disconnect yeah. the internet right now, get onto the bank, do this, do that. Oh, well, no, they're sorting it out. And I Googled the numbers they'd been using. And if he'd put those into Google, it was basically saying dangerous numbers, scammers, HMRC scam, router scam. They were trying to sell him a router. They said that his network was compromised by them. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, and he needed to spend 5,800 and something pounds on a router. What? I'm sorry, I wouldn't expect that uh, to pay that for my entire network. No. Including computers. Oh, my God. And, of course, it was all just a scam to get my money out of him. Meanwhile, they were in his eBay account buying stuff on eBay. I just don't understand how he believes Applying it. for PayPal credit and stuff like this. This is mad. That is one expensive lesson learned there and there. Or do you think he has actually learned his lesson or does he still not quite understand? I'm not sure he understands the depth of it. I've said today you have to change every password. Oh, that's going to be a lot of work. And I said, well, if you don't, you'll be out of work because they'll have stolen your entire identity. You have to change every password. And it can't be idiot dog names and it can't be easy stuff like the football team you support that everybody on Facebook knows. Hmm. Mm. it's just a bit of a worry really isn't it well and it just shows how easily if someone is really insistent and pushy and appearing to be helpful and if you don't understand it well yeah uh, you know, that's um, mm. so a lot of people don't understand technology do they not at all i mean i understand a bit more than i pretend to it suits me not to not to know what's going on. Yeah, well, it's easier to hand it off to someone else, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. There are I'll... times at meetings where people are having difficulties or they're, or they're in trouble and, and someone will raise an eyebrow and look at me and I'll yeah. shake my head because it's not my job to fix it. That's not why I'm there. If they ask me for my help, I'll help them. Well, I'm not going to volunteer and work for nothing. What well, exactly? No, why should I? Um, well, yeah. No, that's not fair. You shouldn't. Nobody should work for nothing. Yeah, so if you fancy um, a, a kick-ass, if I'm allowed to say that at this time of night, 
Uh, Charlize Theron movie, Old Guard, I thought was kind of good, clever concept. And I'll tell you what I really enjoyed last week that I didn't think I would at all. Warrior Nun. <laughs> What's Warrior Nun? It's a young girl who's who's dead. And something happens to the body and it brings her back to life. And she's in a convent. She's been in a, a crash as a child and her mother was killed and she was sort of abandoned and left there. Right. She eventually dies. I won't say any more about how or anything else, but yeah, no spoilers. Something not of this world comes uh, and attacks the nuns, and they have a relic which helps them fight this particular brand of evil, and it ends up in this young girl who comes back to life and can walk. For the first time and all stuff like this and it was really quite cleverly done the emotions of it all and it, there's this sort of sect of warrior nuns who protect the world and yeah. it was quite clever the plot plot twists and the characters i'm eagerly awaiting series two now interesting i've just had a message flash up on my phone from my husband asking me what I'm doing. I'm a little bit suspicious if he's actually watching because the last time he asked what you're doing, he was watching us. Hello. <laughs> but he's going to get bored soon because it's not really his sort of thing. Oh, well, hello, Phil. What are you knitting? <laughs> I want to see a photograph of what you're knitting. What, what and if you're not knitting, I don't want to see a photograph of that. No. Well, unless it's crochet. Or, or weaving. Or weaving, yeah. Anything fibre-based. Well, actually... Mm. Of the craft variety. Yeah, I was going to say that could be a bit dodgy. Should I just reply to him and ask him what he's doing? Yeah, you could just say, are you watching me on Facebook? He's funny. Uh, Rita, in the past when I got those scam calls from Microsoft, I'd just tell them they should call back when my husband was home, that he's an IT professional and would be really interested in what they had to say and they usually hang up at that point. <laughs> That's funny. See, I, I go in different directions with it. It depends on what mood I'm in and sometimes I will say that my elderly aunt has had a fall and I'll put you on hold. And I just need to help lift her up and get her back to bed. Do you mind hanging on? And I'll put them on hold and I'll leave the phone somewhere and go and watch a movie for a few hours. Brilliant. And it ties up the phone line for them because they can't end the call. Yeah. And it stops them harassing someone else. Oh, I can't do that now because I've actually resigned from this particular position as candidate but I was the police and crime spokesperson for Cumbria for the Liberal Democrats and the candidate for police and crime commissioner for next year but I've stepped down from that as of yesterday right um, and normally I would just say well actually I'm the police and crime spokesperson so I'd be really interested to talk to your technical people as to how you can help uh, because obviously I, I would be in charge of the police if elected to this position and working directly with the, the Titan Roku, which is regional organised crime units, uh, at which point they tend to make themselves really scarce. Strange, though. Strange. Oh, yeah, no. odd. I keep dropping my balls tonight. Phil might be doing the same thing. Well, you never know. His golf balls. Well, he has been... Um on his golf game on his ipad all day because there's no friday and saturday are his days off right yeah i think jake when he goes to work in the shipyard will be three days on three days off right that's not too bad is it how many hours will he do um it's usually a 37 and a half hour week but from what my brother tells me, anybody that is working on production is more or less being told that we need you to do as much overtime as you can. Right. So they're working quite a lot of extra hours 
And I said to Jake, how do you feel about that? And he just went, yeah, well, when he was at Maddox last year doing that, that first job that he had, yeah. which was building data bars for service centres for Microsoft, um, every second of overtime he was offered, he did. Didn't matter if it was weekends, finishing at 10 o'clock at night, working overnight, whatever they wanted, he just did for the money. So I think he'll be the same at the shipyard. Yeah. yeah. Got a good work. Yeah. So Michelle says she used to tell them that she was suspicious of the call as if they had access to her system. This was illegal. Mm. Oh, I'm going to be going to bed very shortly. I must admit with them. Um, these scammers did ring my client back. Yeah. And I may have got him to pass me the phone when he was dropping off his computer to be hopefully cleaned and sorted out as but certainly to the best of my ability. Yeah. Um and I did answer it and I called her every single swear word I could think of. Excellent. And did they listen for very long? Funnily enough, within about four words they'd hung up and they didn't ring back i do that with the uh, you know when you get the phone call hi we understand you've been in an accident i just start saying all the swear words i can think of and see how long it takes them to hang up it doesn't take long no it's ridiculous isn't it hmm. i couldn't believe how quickly those calls started again after lockdown had finished yeah, and I've had four this week, supposedly from HMRC, telling me there's a warrant been issued for my arrest. All right. Um, unless I pay £480 over the phone. Oh. Well, what you want to do is ask them if, um, if they arrest you, do you get a strip search? Because if so, bring it on. Yeah, I should. Yeah. God, I did get be... a dirty phone call once. Did you? Was it good? Lots of years ago. It was just sort of deep breathing and panting and a lot of rubbish, really. A bit boring. They could be a bit more inventive, couldn't they? Well, I, th I said I wanted him to, to cover me in crushed Weetabix and then lick it all off and he hung up. Ugh. Can't think why. Maybe he's got a thing about fibre. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle says when they phone with one of these fake accident things, she said, my face has always been like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm definitely nicking that one. Yeah, that's good. I should say, I should, I should say, yes, I was in an accident because my guide dog didn't tell me which way I should be steering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always remember that movie. See no, was it see no evil, hear no evil? Well, oh, Richard um, Pryor and um, oh, what's his name? Oh, Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder. Yeah, one was deaf and one was blind. That was really funny. Yeah, really where that funny. girl's got a gun to his head and he says, "I, I suppose uh, he's out of the question." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, all those funny probably not very PC anymore. One of the other good ones they did is the Silver Streak. It's about a train, by the way. I don't know if I remember that one. It sounds familiar. That's, it's really, really funny. You should watch that one. I did like Trading Places. That was a um, Richard Pryor one, wasn't it? Uh, are you thinking of Stir Crazy? Because mm. Eddie Murphy was in Trading Places. Was it Eddie Murphy? Yeah. All oh, right. I did like that movie though. That's and a, Dan that, Aykroyd. Yeah, I know Dan Aykroyd was in it. That's a that's one that's a Christmas movie that you know, don't actually remember that it's a Christmas movie. I love it. I think it's so funny. Yeah, I love that one. And Planes, Trains and Automobiles is another Christmas movie that you don't think is a Christmas movie. 
it kind of makes me cry though because i feel so sorry for john candy's character in that one when you eventually learn about his story mm. yeah oh, i love john candy he was such a good actor uncle buck our oh, uncle buck is one of the best movies ever when he makes those giant pancakes yeah <laughs> your dog's a ball sniffer microwave in the socks <laughs> yeah i do i love that one movie it's and cool awesome. runnings cool runnings is on disney i love that one yeah that is a good one that's one of my brother's favorites mm. yeah oh dear well i'm flagging here missus yeah it's that time of night have you set an alarm i have set an alarm but I'm signing I'm, off shortly yeah i'm definitely feeling like it's bedtime it was my lion morning this morning but i only managed to make it till six o'clock i mean that's so disappointing it's a bit slack really yeah i mean come on i was hoping for at least quarter to seven no, I was up at ten to six. Hmm. The dog, even the dogs were flat out. They were just sort of raised an eyelid as if to say, "What are you doing?" And then thought, "Oh yeah, she's going to make our breakfast in a minute, so we'll get up now." Yeah, I think that was what was the issue with me actually, because the dog came and stuck his nose in my face to tell me that even though Callum had taken him for his walk, he hadn't got his breakfast yet. Because when Caitlin takes him, she feeds him when she gets back in. I feed him when we get back in. Callum, no. He always says, I don't know what to give him. It's the same thing he has every day. It's not difficult. Well, learn what to give him yeah, then. Exactly. It's not difficult. He has a tray of um, chicken drummers and chicken thighs in the fridge. And he gets one drum and one thigh. It's not difficult. He has the same thing every day. Oh, bless. Yeah. And he munches his way through them. I've emailed Aldi about my missing sausages. Oh, yeah. I've had seven packs and it says 20 sausages. Yeah. And five of the seven packs have only had 19 in them. <gasps> That's rude. Well, it's just fundamentally wrong, isn't it? Have you had a response? Not yet. Hmm. I'm sure I will. I've had the automated, we've had your query and we'll get back to you, blah -de blah blah COVID. Yeah. Uh, I think that's an excuse for everything at the minute, isn't it? Yeah, well, I kind of understand some of it. But I think some people are using it as an excuse, though, aren't they? Possibly. I do feel like Morrison's have stepped up to the plate, though. They, To be honest, at the very beginning, their delivery service was absolute pants. They really were not set up to design, uh, to cope with the increase in demand. They really yeah. dropped the ball. But now it's perfect. I mean, I went on Monday lunchtime and got a slot for first thing on Tuesday morning, click and collect. And everything that I ordered was there. So I don't think I can complain, really. I do like my click and collect now. It means I don't have to go in the shop at all. And it's only 25 quid that you have to order. It's not a lot. No, it's not. So. I should ask my Auntie Helena to come along one evening. Oh, yeah. Why is that? Because she's Ken Morrison's niece. All right. Yeah, cool. Will she give us a discount? I've never had a discount off that family in my life. <laughs> well, you know, that's how the rich people get rich, isn't it? Let's be honest. Well, I mean, they've looked after my cousins and yeah. uh, and Helena, you know, I can't complain. Can't look after everyone, I suppose, can they? Well, I'm not really their family, am I? Well, extended. Well, yeah, but you, this is the problem if you ever get money. All your extended family come out of the woodwork, don't they? Sounds like the royal family. All those siblings that never wanted anything to do with Meghan Markle up until she made some money. and 
No, I'm not a fan of how her and Harry have behaved. I will say that. I, I but, don't think they. But I don't. I think I honestly think that her father's family are just white trash. Oh yeah, I think the lot of them have, have not behaved very well at all. Not one of them. They're a disgrace. They really are. I I watched that um, Netflix documentary about Jeffrey Epstein the other day. Oh, I've seen some of it. I found it quite distressing. It is, it is, but um, it really makes you think, though, doesn't it? I mean, I honestly don't believe he killed himself. There are far too many people out there who had a lot to lose if he'd have ever talked. Oh, I would say so. And um, I'm actually just quite suspicious prince andrew now there is a car crash <laughs> but he obviously i mean if you listen to him very carefully he's he's at great pains to say he has no recollection he never denies doing any of it who talks like that yeah exactly I have no recollection of that photo being taken. I have no recollection of having sex with that girl. There's no, there's no like, no, I didn't do it. Yes, I did. It, it's, it's the language of a liar. You look yeah. back at Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky. Yeah. I have no recollection. Exactly. That's exactly Clinton, what he said. Bill Clinton, there are people, witnesses, swear that he went to Jeffrey Epstein's island, yet he categorically denies he was ever there i suppose the difficulty when you're in public life is if somebody's got a thing against you they'll do anything to besmirch you but, there but it, a... it's the I, i'm interested in the language he uses when he denies it and if he says i have no recollection again he's lying yeah, because it, that, that is one way of saying no without actually saying no, isn't it? Well, the thing is, it it's hard to lie when you talk how you normally talk. But when you say something in an obscure way, it's mm. much easier to lie because you can convince yourself it's the truth. Yeah. That's well, the, there was, the there psychology was staff, of it. There was a staff member there saying that Bill Clinton was there. He saw him. He was in a chair just on the sun terrace having a drink all innocent he said you know there were no girls near him he said people quite often came on the airplane would come for a lunch and then would be gone within an hour or two he said it was quite normal for that sort of thing to happen and that bill clinton was there under those kinds of circumstances he didn't stay the night he was there for a couple of hours just having a dinner went nothing went Stop on. over yeah yeah so so there was no reason for that man then to turn around and say i was not there why doesn't he just admit the fact that he was there for a lunch you know nobody's saying you've done something wrong he's I just making himself look happen. like an idiot yeah well he's, he's got previous on that one hasn't he's he yeah. bless him yeah oh looks like you're inactive <laughs> it, it knows us very well it does it does right i think we're getting towards time to sign off folks we will see you on sunday as yes. planned yeah um do please uh share photographs then of what are you working on we'd love to have some updates um any questions or a topic you'd like us to cover please let us know um but there will be more of emma's fable yeah hopefully it might be finished um, i'd like to be able to wear it well my little dress i think it's going to be called mary eleanor oh that's lovely that's my auntie sis's name but she hated it okay so she just got called sis because she was my granddad's sis yeah makes sense but she spelled it c i double s right okay Families. Right, so we'll see you on Sunday at 3.30. So I'll click a few Toodles. buttons.
you may sing. <laughs> 